you know sometimes things go according to plan. And other times, well, the outcome is a bit uncertain. And that's going to be the theme of today's episode because I was doing some cleaning in a refrigerator that reminds me of the Narnia closet and things can get lost in it very easily. And what I found in that refrigerator just completely blew my mind. For those of you that are into dry curing meats, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, you'll take your piece of meat, you're all excited about it. You cure it, you vacuum seal it and stick it in your refrigerator. And then life happens. And sometimes you forget about it for an extra week or two, or maybe even a month. I get emails like that constantly. Well, in the case of today's video, I forgot about these projects and some of these have been in the refrigerator, completely raw, cured for the upwards of two and a half years. This Culatello finished curing 6-8 of 2021. We are February the 10th of 2024. This pork belly, still raw, although cured finished curing on February the 13th, 2022. And same thing for this beef fillet. My guess, and I don't exactly remember, was I was gonna do something with both of these. Uh, but at this point, I don't even know if they're still good. Let's take a closer look at this meat. We'll open it up and determine if it's even salvageable. If it is, we're gonna go ahead and continue with the process and see what happens. I may even actually take some of this pork belly and cook it up because two and a half years in the fridge, the flavor's got to be off the chart, right? All right, let's start with the beef filet. And I think what we're going to do is let our senses determine how this video plays out. We're going to see how the beef looks, how it smells, how it feels, things like that. And right off the bat, I got to tell you, it looks great. Beautiful color. It's not mushy. You know, sometimes bacterial infection can cause the meat to get mushy. It can also cause the meat to have a slimy you know, kind of film on it. And although this is wet, I, I wouldn't say it's slimy. Smell, you know, we got obviously a lot of fennel. We've got a lot of Calabrian pepper, but when I put it up to my nose, no problem. I mean, it smells like aged beef, actually. Interesting. All right. So quick rinse, get those extra spices off. And yeah, this actually looks fairly normal. Another smell and we are good to go. Okay, cool. Let's set this to the side and uh, see what happens. Next up is the pork belly. I think that we were gonna do kind of like a modified version of a pancetta slash bacon. You know, I'm not, once again, I totally don't remember, but we open this up. Not a lot of moisture drawn from the pork belly, uh, which is typical for the pork belly. Smells fine, not a problem. Beautiful spice coating. I think on this one, we've got smoked paprika and cayenne pepper and all right. There's the rinsed, cured pork belly that's been in our fridge for two years. Quick question for all you watching. What's the longest time you've ever forgotten about a piece of cured meat in your refrigerator? All right. No problem there. What I think I'm going to do with this one, because it's way too big for the Reserve 50 dry aging cabinet, we're just going to square that up. And I'm only going to use maybe three or four pieces of that pork belly. And that looks good right there. Square it up, kind of like a pancetta Tessa is what we're going to end up doing with it. And then finally, we've got the meaty hind leg of the pig. This is the ham, a.k.a. the culatello. And that just looks amazing. It's got a beautiful color. No weird liquid films on it. It's not slimy at all. Quick smell. Wow, that smells awesome. This smells better than if it were to have just come out of my fridge because it's aged for so long. And if I had to be completely honest, what I'm most disappointed about with this particular cut is that it's been sitting in the fridge for two and a half years. Uh, if we had had it in our chamber, we'd be eating it today. Or actually, we'd be eating it a year ago. Anyway, I don't see anything wrong with it. So what we're going to do is continue with the process and wrap these in a casing, stick them in a dry curing chamber and see what happens. As far as the Pork belly, we're going to leave it just like that. I think that's the easiest way to do it. For the beef fillet, I think I'm going to dry one flat so it doesn't take forever, much like the pesterma. And then the other one we're going to shape much like this. Now, the other one's a little bit bigger, so it'll probably end up taking about six or six or seven weeks. Uh, as far as the culatello, we are going to wrap that in the traditional casing, which is the hog bladder. If you're into making culatello, I'll put a link for this casing in the description box below. I got it from Craft Butcher's Pantry. And it's been rinsed, flushed, and stretched out. And, you know, you can get these in different sizes. This one may be a little on the tight side, but we're going to have to see. It looks tiny. 
And if it is not a big deal, we can always grab another casing because like, I don't know, five or six came in a box and just stitch them together. Let me know in the comment section below, do you think this casing is too tiny for that huge Culatello? <laughs> Well, check that out. That turned out to be the perfect size. Excellent. Now, if you want to play it safe, you could always get a slightly larger size, and that's not a big deal. But you do want a tight-fitting casing on that muscle. You want no air pockets. We're going to go ahead and stitch up that opening right there at the top, get a netting on it, and we'll be good to go. At this point, we're just going to follow standard operating procedure when it comes to dry curing meat. So we're going to get a netting on it, tie it off in the event we want to hang it, and then, of course, you can't forget to prick it. Pricking gets out any air pockets. It helps that casing adhere to the meat a whole lot better. And then you want to weigh it. We need to know what our actual weight is so that we can kind of get an idea as to when it's done. We are going to tag it. And one final step before it goes into the dry curing chamber, and a lot of folks skip this step, you want to add some sort of a protective mold. There is a 100% guaranteed certainty that mold will grow on your meat. What we're doing here is we're choosing the mold that we want to grow. This is a beneficial mold. Uh, in this case, I'm using mold 800 from a prepared solution that I had in the refrigerator. And all I'm doing is splashing it on the meat, giving it the good old fashioned rub down. And that's it. This is now ready for the chamber. Let's move on. Next up, we're gonna work with the pork belly. And in this particular case, I'm gonna use a kit called the dry curing wraps. Now, technically, I'm only using the wrap part of this kit. And so these are basically just collagen sheets. If you don't have collagen sheets, I'll put a link in the description box below for just collagen sheets. They are quite possibly the most versatile style of casing that you can use in this craft because you can cut them to size. You can use them for weird sized cuts. And you don't have to worry about trying to slam, you know, your meat into some small casing. For this project, I'm just going to take a square of pork belly, stick it right in the corner, and just trim the sheet around it. Notice that my cutting board was a little damp. With this particular casing, it doesn't matter too much because they're not ultra fragile. Unlike the dry aging wraps, which tend to rip very easy. The application process for these sheets is ultra simple. Just wrap your meat. That's it. Uh, you can press out any air pockets, although it's technically not that important because we will be pricking this out here in just a second. And notice that I'm making all of my folds on the meat side, right? So you have a fatty side and a meat side. Uh, in this particular case, all my folds are going on the meat side, just like that. And that is it. We're done. I'm not even going to tie that down because we're just going to lay that flat in our chamber. Now, of course, if you want to tie it up and hang it, you can absolutely do that. But in our case, it's like I said, it's not necessary. So there we go. There is the second one. Notice we do have those little air pockets right there. We're going to get rid of that right now with our sausage pricker. Air pockets between your casing and your meat is where things can go south in the drying chamber. Undesirable molds can grow, things like that. So you just want to make sure you prick all that out and make sure that the casing is tight with the meat. All right, so just no air pockets, and then we'll move on to the next step, which is to weigh your meat. And if you are recording the actual weight and the target weight, when it comes to doing pork belly, the target weight is going to be a little different because pork belly is a lot fattier than normal cuts, and fat doesn't really retain water like the meat does. And so if it's a fatty pork belly, instead of targeting 40% weight loss, what I normally do is target like a 20% weight loss. If your pork belly is relatively meaty, well, then I would increase that number to about 25-28%. In both of those cases, the end result can be eaten raw. Now, if you do plan on cooking your pancetta, you do not have to dry it that much. You could reduce those numbers by half, and you should be good to go. All right, let's go ahead and get the mold on it. Mold 800, if you're not familiar with it, is, I, I wouldn't say it's a new mold. It's a few years old, and it's got a combination of penicillium uh, candidum as well as Penicillium nalgiavensis. So you've got that typical mold flavor that you would have from dry curing meats, but then you also have this camembert cheese type element that's happening. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just testing mold 800 so I can make a proper video for you guys and let you know what I think. And if you are currently struggling with what to do with your excess mold solution after you make salami or whatever, check out the video linked at the end of this video that talks about how to prepare mold in such a way that you could store it in your refrigerator for up to 60 days. Definitely a great way to save money and keep that excess mold. Let's go ahead and take this and pop it into the chamber as well. We are now done with the pancetta. Let's move on 
to the beef fillet. All right, we're going to blast through this real quick because it's basically a rinse and repeat type of process. Collagen sheet, we're going to wrap it in there nice and tight. In this particular case, we are going to put a netting around it. You can truss this up if you want, tie it off if you're going to hang it. And we did the other one flat. I am going to prick out any air pockets. Don't forget to weigh it so that we can record the actual and the target weight. We're going to be targeting about a 35% weight loss. And then we're going to put a little bit of mold 800. And there you have it. Mold 600 works as well, by the way. Both of these are done. They look kind of great. And now they're ready for the chamber. All right, the chamber we're using is called the Reserve 50 Dry Curing Chamber. It's also a dry aging chamber. It's a smaller chamber, perfect for the hobbyist. And uh, I'll put a link in the description box below if you want information on that. Notice on that mid-shelf, we've got the Gentile Salami slowly drying. There we go. Hey, quick question. What do you think I should put in there next? Leave me a comment in the comment section below what you would like to see me dry in this dry curing chamber. All right, guys, now we wait. And thankfully, some of these projects are not going to take too long. The Thin Filet and the Pancetta Tessa are probably going to be done I would guess somewhere around three to four weeks. The Culatello, on the other hand, has got every bit of a year, year and a half ahead of it. And there's a pretty decent chance I'm not going to keep the Culatello in that Reserve 50 for the entire amount of time. As you can see, it is large. It takes up a lot of space. And for those of you that are curious, we've got about 14 pounds give or take of dry cured meat total inside that chamber and I could probably add maybe another four to five pounds you know if I hung it on either side of the culatello maybe on the on the bottom level and so I'm thinking max when it comes to dry cured meats you're looking at maybe 17 to 19 pounds I know the reserve 50 claims you can put about 50 pounds of meat in there and maybe you can uh, if you're dry aging it, but when you're dry curing it, it's a little different uh, because we've got ours just about maxed out. The reason I like the Culatello in there right now is because it's helping to add volume and helping to increase the humidity inside that chamber. The more volume you have in your chamber, the better regulated your temperature is going to be, and also all that volume is going to be releasing moisture slowly. The folks who sell the Reserve 50 recommend keeping at least 10 pounds of meat inside that cabinet so that everything dries nice and even, and that Culatello is helping us do that. All right, guys, I got to tell you, I am super interested to see the results of this experiment. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you can catch all the updates. And before we go, why don't we cook up a little bit of that filet and a little bit of that pancetta? Remember, it's been sitting in our fridge, curing basically for literally two years, and um, the flavor has got to be radical. So let's go ahead and do that, give it a taste. We'll see what it's all about. Quick and easy, nothing special. We got the beef cured two years in the fridge, almost to the date. I think we're two years and 10 days in the refrigerator. Incredibly juicy. The texture is blowing my mind. I mean, that is radically different than you would expect from a filet. So now you have that kind of cured ham look. Very cool. And then of course, we've got the seasoned pork belly. Let's start with that. Pork belly cured two years in the fridge. Down the hatch. Hmm. Ooh. Wow. Oh. That is salty. Funky. All right. That's it's salty and funky. Deep leaves a lingering funky flavor in your mouth. I'm not hating it. I got to be honest. Like it is a unique experience, although. It is a little more of on the acquired taste sort of level. I don't think that I could just get down on a huge bowl of this pork belly, which makes me wonder what it's going to taste like coming out of the dry ager, the dry curing chamber, because it's only going to develop more in flavor at those temperatures. And so we'll see. Salty, funky, definitely not rotten. I don't feel like it was rotten. I just feel like it was definitely matured. Not sure I would ever do this intentionally, uh, but as an experiment, you know what? Why not? It's kind of fun. All right, let's try the beef filet. Check that out. Looks kind of like pastrami, actually. Got a little pepper coating on it. Looks really good. It smells nice and beefy. 
Ooh. Oh, golly, that is seriously salt. That's saltier than the other one. The pepper saves it. <laughs> that has got a serious deep... Both of these together are it's like part of a rhythm and blues band. I mean, there is funk happening on this cutting board. I don't know about this. Wow. Okay. Well, it, I could say that it's not rotten. I could say that I am not concerned that I'm going to end up with some sort of a weird bacterial disease like botulism or anything like that. Um, but the flavor is wild. It is definitely on that super aged level. A lot of funky umami notes. Um, like I said, I, I'm not hating it, but golly, this kind of just crosses that line of what I'm comfortable eating a lot of. A little bit I can handle, but man, it's just hard to eat that because it's so salty. Totally wild. Flavor is definitely magnified. It may be magnified a little too much in my book. It'll be interesting to see what happens once we take these out of the dry curing chamber. And I hope you can come along for the ride. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.